Okay, good morning or afternoon, everybody. So today we are going to complete our, let's say, discussion about visual design. Uh, and then tomorrow with, with Alberto, you will speak about design patterns, positive and negative design patterns that you can, that, that you know, and that you can use consider uh, in general. But today we, we are going still to focus on uh, visual design and we said that text was one factor of visual design and the other factor is um, could be the structure, the layout, etc. and in particular the alignment. So you, you probably know or you can easily see that every user, graphical user interface that you met, especially the good one, have some sort of internal alignment. So this is, for instance, some settings in one version, one Windows version of PowerPoint, and you can see, if you look closely, that there is alignment between the various elements of the user interface. So here in the sidebar, all the text is aligned, pixel perfectly aligned. It's not one, one pixel left, one pixel right. And also here, all the elements that are drop down start from the same, or the text input also start from the same position in the block and end more or less in the same position here. And similarly, all the first level checkbox are aligned, no matter if they are at the beginning or they are at the bottom. And then there is some inconsistency, incoherence, like this drop down here that is not aligned, is not going up to the end. And we can imagine that according to what you select, this may become a little bit bigger or smaller, uh, but there is some alignment between similar object. And the same alignment is actually enforced or recommended by guidelines. Uh, in this case, the layout for Visual Studio. So this is Microsoft that recommend if you are using Visual Studio and you are creating some model, some pop-ups, you not only have to align things properly, so this is actually a screenshot from the documentation. So if you have a, um, a first level input, then the nested input should be moved a little bit on the right, and also here it gives you indication, okay, this label and this input must be exactly 12 pixels. Not 13, not 5, 12 pixels, and all of these are 12 pixels. And also give you the distance between the various elements in various cases, either on the right, either on the left, etc. So this is alignment. So if you are creating an extension for Visual Studio, for Visual Studio and you want to create a good extension that feel native, that feel natural with all the other extension and option that Visual Studio has, you have to follow these guidelines, again, that are about alignment in this case. It's not about other principle, but about alignment to keep everything consistent within the application. So now we are just, a reminder, we are just speaking about visual design, so most of the things we are going to see are just visual things to look good, to look proper, to look appropriate. And similarly, alignment is was present in the Java look and feel guidelines from 1999. So not only recently. So alignment has always been for graphic user interface something that um, producer of software system recommended and guided in this direction. So this is from Sun Microsystem in 1999 before Java was uh, taken by Oracle. But still, you see, Alignment 
all the checkbox are aligned with the input and the text, the container of the text ends when the inputs end and the button are aligned to the inputs. So small, small details that help to keep consistency and help not to notice that something strange is happening. So again, avoid people asking why this is moved, is there is some hierarchy consideration, etc. And like in this case, it enforces a hierarchy because this is moved on the right uh, with respect to the first one. And probably unchecking this, in this example, will hide or disable these two fields and enable it, it will create that. So it gives um, a stronger concept of hierarchy mm, to the alignment, etc. And well, just to, to speak about grid layout, since all this alignment is typically made on grid, but if you ever developed for the web, you, you know that there, is, there are grids, there are columns, and so you can have various grid in a user interface according to columns, margin, space between columns, uh, that is padding on the web, uh, et cetera, and so you can structure your application like with bootstrap in multiple columns and decide what to put inside columns. And this is not made by chance, it's not made because bootstrap or whatever think that a grid is a good idea, but because all of these uh, alignment, so other also grid systems, all this alignment is actually helpful for visual design, for navigating, for hierarchy, for consistency, etc. Hmm? And if you see also newspaper, again, hmm, as a web page that is structured in grid. Hmm? And also grids, like in here, help to structure content from big screen to a mobile version because you have already some portion of content and you can just reorder the entire column, hmm? like it happens with, with Bootstrap and others. Uh, but again, uh, similarly, newspaper is also structured in grids. Hmm? Clearly here, we cannot see everything split in the same grids, but they are mixing different kind of rows. Hmm? So in the first row, hmm, we have the same grids on the header. Hmm? So here there is the first column, here there is the second column, the red one, and here there is sort of the third column. That is more or less what happens with the title. Hmm? The title is in the middle grid. And then you have another kind of grid hmm? that is this one that has smaller but still split the space evenly. And not only split the space evenly, it also split the space within two of the biggest the other red column, so everything is organized. And if you, have, if you need to have another of this kind of row, you will follow the same structure, again, for consistency and so on. And similar, stack overflow. We already met stack overflow last time. Also, this can be split in different kind of grids, smaller, bigger, according to what they want to represent but still all the elements in this first, let's say three columns are perfectly aligned and represent the same content and the same mechanism. And even the Polytechnical follow the uh, grid-based structure. Do you know what is this? You probably, I don't know if you ever see this version, but what is this? Yes, it's the plan of all the courses that you have. Um, the, the, the list of courses, so you can choose four. Hmm? So this is based on, on a grid, actually, hmm? because the first period is inserted on the right with respect to the year, because it's under the year, so there is hierarchy, and then there is a column with the code, a column with the language, a code with the, the name of the course, credits, teacher, notes, and, um, constraint, and so one course is dependent from the others, etc. And this is the, the version that existed until 2019, since forever, until 2019. And then in 2020, for, and moving forward, the, that same page is the one that you are probably most used to see, that is this one. Hmm? 
that was improved with respect to the 2019 page, right? Because there are, we still have a hierarchy in one way, visual hierarchy. You can close the here and collapse everything and columns are easily visualized because there's also a row that is splitting between the various columns. And instead of having random things here at the end of the, uh, of the line, they decide to put, to put them in another random column, but at least they are separate and not just at the end of the text. And then there is the schedule, still the teachers, still the credits, still the language as before. So it's, it's an improvement that brings with them other challenges, let's say, but it's an improvement with the previous um, page. So which is one, for instance, thing. So also rows, you see, are divided. So every course has a different color, background color. So it's easier to say, okay, I'm looking at um, information system security or I'm looking at the thesis because they are also visually separated here instead the difference between one course and the other is harder to get. Yes, you have the code, but there is also stuff in the middle, the credits, the, um, the topic, mm, etc. cetera. Mm, so the area of which the course pertain. And here instead is, is clearer that the, 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 the area in which the course is, is split in another column. That maybe is not really useful for, for our students, but still, is an, a mandatory information that they have to, to add. Uh, so it's an improvement, and visually, just on the visual perspective. However, it has one, still one point that can be improved. Can you catch it? Yeah, you can write something instead of the flag or in addition to the flags, but there is a bigger problem. Uh, no, I think that if you resize the page, it just becomes smaller up to a certain level. Yes, all the courses, the thing that I said, all the courses are in a different, in a row with a different color. Right, so you have information system that is white, colored, the background, and then there is um, computer architecture in Italian that is gray. Then there is OR in a now white background, and OR is not a course, right? And then there is computer architecture in English, etc. So this OR is not a course, so clearly it's, and it. If you don't know, if you have first year students enrolled in Polytechnico and you see this page as first thing, this OR is ambiguous. Is the information system plus computer architecture or computer architecture and data science or, or it's between courses. So it's between groups, the first two or the second two or the other two or the other three or there are separate or, or it's architecture, computer architecture, or computer architecture in English, which is the scope of this or, is among all the things that happens previously with the things that happens after or not. If you don't know how it works, you cannot say if it's one-to-one -one or multiple-to-multiple. -multiple. Visually, you don't have this information. So, which could be, for instance, a, a better way to, to show this or visually? Maybe you can uh, put the coordinates in the, in the point, the, the lines and the... The name of the course is? No, no, the... the oh, the, the Italian. Yeah. And the, the, the courses. The okay, so you can put... You can, okay, you are, you, you're saying I can create a border between... Uh, architecture or and architecture. Basically a stronger bold here, border here, and then so uh, put a square uh, in, in the lines mm, to, to represent that this is one piece of information. Yes, that could be a possibility. Uh, and then another one. Uh, the color of the background of the logo. 
yes, you can choose the same color of the background, for instance. So architect computer architecture in English or in Italian or and computer architecture in English could have the same color. So instead of alternating color over the row, that means one course, another course, another course, because they are different, they can be put in the same background color, for instance. Hmm? So all of these choices are pros and cons, clearly, either the change border or change color, but visually it's still something better than this one. Hmm? So this is an improvement with respect to the previous one, but visually, so this is the kind of things that visual design does, help to navigate the space if you're not clearly expert. Uh, 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 for, for instance, if you're not expert on, on something, then you know that computer architecture in English is in or with computer architecture in Italia because you have the experience, you have the knowledge to know that one course or the other. Because when you do the, um, the your teaching load, your uh, course load, you, cannot select multiple courses in or, you just have one or the other. So it's the system that has constraint to avoid this error, but here it's ambiguous, okay? Uh, so here there's another example, this is Amazon actually. Uh, here there is the same, this is the same page, and adding an address to a profile. This is the version of 2015, and this is the version of 2019. Okay, they have the same identical information. There is nothing one side that is not present in the other. The main information are there. Um, why did the change? Again, it's just a visual, mostly a visual problem, not a problem difference, not content based. Why did the change according to you? The, the, the input box are not, oh, the labels are, are aligned on the right instead of the left. And there are two buttons, and they are very confusing, you don't know where to go. Continue. Yes, to continue to what. Mm -hmm. But this, you know, you, they could have aligned everything on the, on the left and remove the button, and, but they did something a little bit more uh, drastic hmm? than not just removing. So in before 2015, this was pretty usual to find labels aligned on the right, close to the input, and input field that were not all the same size, but with different length to tell the people how much information they need to put into it. And so the state, province, region is shorter than the full name because typically it's one word and the full name is more than one word. And the address also is longer than the phone number because the phone number is a restricted number of elements uh, instead, the address is longer. So it was pretty typical to have these boxes. I say by convention, most of the forms uh, up to a certain point looked like this. So Amazon was actually uh, using the, the standard that was present at, at that moment. That is something we are not used anymore. We are used more to these kind of forms in which the label is on the top of the input or within the input some, ca some, ca some, some cases. Uh, but the same information. So it's first of all to adapt to the current, let's say standard, uh, but also, so we are not used anymore to see this indication of the length in the forms, but also which is one, uh, let's say benefit. Uh, also they added the street address within, as a suggestion within the address line that like here, uh, instead before they didn't, uh, but which is one other advantage to have it um, so squared. Yes, because it's independent on the size of the screen. So they, this was born in a age where there were no smartphones. This will look good on a smartphone screen without any problem, without any changes in the layout. 
because it's already one column. And so if you look at this on a smartphone, you see that properly fitted on the screen of the proper size, not too small, not too big. This instead is not responsive, it's not able to, to adapt to, to that. And so we are more used to this because we moved more to mobile first or mobile also um, website. So they updated it as well. So this is a yet another example of just visual design because the content is actually the same. So some best practice for this part, um, when you have to design something that needs text, that needs people to input text especially, or if you have a lot of text, start from the block, longest block of text. So first put the block, longest block of text on the page to the side, the relative size hmm, to make a decision about the shorter block of text. Because if the longest block of text is fine, then everything else that is shorter will adapt accordingly. And left aligned text, hmm, so not like this, but the left aligned text is usually faster to skim hmm, than any other kind of aligned text. Uh, aligned text. And alignment, all the alignment that we've seen guides the eyes and reduce clutter because everything is more ordered, everything is more coherent, and we prefer these kind of things. We have less problem with these kind of things immediately. So avoid misalignment, deviation are detected because they are incoherence. So when, again, when you want to add incoherence, when you want to deviate, just do it for a reason. So for hierarchy, move things because they are hierarchically ordered, etc. And also use proximity and scale to convey information that are the same meaning or they are strongly related as a meaning. Hmm? And you can also separate things that instead are related to other items. And this is about alignment. Uh, the other critical piece of information that we, we need to consider in visual design is colors to avoid something like this. That clearly is not what we want, it's not something that you will appreciate. This is actually a real website. Um, it has colors, right? Uh, probably too much colors. So we don't want, this is not a good example, it's clearly all of shame, really top position of the all of shame, um, about colors and visual design, etc. So colors are actually a powerful tool to communicate key information. If you use too much color, you are miscommunicating. You are overloading hmm, the element. So you are not able to distinguish which is the key information, which is not. And, and also, inappropriate use of color reduces the performance of the people using an interactive system. So it makes everything slower. Hmm? Because people use color to, to identify. We use color to identify key information. So as suggestions, first of all, don't exaggerate. The fewer color, the better. Then, first of all, design in grayscale. Information, the main information should be conveyed by text, by layout, by alignment, not by color. Color needs to highlight more but all the information should be there, all the information should be already visible and well organized. And when adding color, try to respect the same pattern that you can have with the grayscale design. So everything in grayscale, black, white, various tones of gray, try to respect the same. So if it's something is, is black, use a strong color. If something is more close to the white, then use a a less powerful color. And colors should have a meaning. Hmm? Again, coherence, if you use all your button of navigation are blue, then navigation should still be blue along the entire application. Not, they are not becoming white, yellow at a certain point, right? And meaning to colors. Hmm? So if a card of something is, 
is a, has a specific color that all the cards should have that specific color, coherence again. Uh, again, not exaggerate means also choose a consistent palette of colors, hmm? two, three primary colors and some variation of those to represent the, the elements that you want. And avoid to simultaneous display poor color, extreme colors. Hmm? So poor means highly saturated. A the, the reddest red, the, re the bluest blue. And so highly pure color, like the one that you can have with, with, the, in, with colors for painting, like pure color. And instead, if you start to adding white, instead if you start to adding other colors, it becomes not pure from this per perspective. And avoid to display not only pure, but spectrally extreme colors, so blue and red, shouldn't be displayed together in the same page. Mm? And pastel colors of the saturated option are typically better mm? overall. And why this last point? Because we, the color, are not an objective, you know, that is not an objective uh, property of materials, right? You know that? Yes. And so it's subjective perception of colors that depends on many things, including light. Hmm? So, and this is the visible spectrum, the average visible spectrum for, for us as human being. And colors, just to make a concrete example, depends for instance from luminosity. So if we, which, which color is this one? Which color is this one? The main color. Blue. If we turn off the light, it will be the same, you will see the same identical blue? No. But this is still the same material, we are not recoloring this. So this is because we see the color according to, for instance, the light that the object received and the light that our eyes receives. Hmm? So colors are not uh, objective properties, are just subjective because it depends on many things, uh, in the real world especially. And our vision is actually just to open a parenthesis of why we see color and why we should avoid um, highly saturated colors together. Uh, well, we have seen that we collect much of our information by vision. Uh, by looking at things, and how are these mechanisms to receive light, transform it to electrical signal to our brain that process information, and find patterns, and recognize that this is a box that is opened, because we have experience of that box opening, and we know how it works. Because we, we experience a lot of time boxes like this, even if it's not identically for uh, the, the blackboard. Um, so we detect patterns, movement, and we realize how to, to operate this, but all this starts from the light we receive on our eyes. And our eyes has different color sensitivities mm, uh, because our eyes have two kind of um, element in it to understand colors and to see, let's say, things. One are the roads and the other ones are the cones. In our eyes, there are a lot of roads, and they are, uh, they don't see colors, they see lumin different luminosity, mm? and it's thanks to roads that we can see something when it's dark, for instance, because they are highly subjective to the light. Mm? So even when we have small light, we can see something, some kind of colors, thanks to the roads, uh, that have a high sensitive here, hmm, more or less between this blue and green, hmm, and stop working basically with high white light, so the red. Hmm. So if you go in a dark room and wait for a moment and you see some, you have put something blue or green in front of you, or something red in front of you, you recognize that the elements that is green, blue, as colored in that, in that color, while the red things 
will look like more closely to black because we lose sensitivity about roads with high, this, this kind of colors here. And similarly, we have a sensitivity blue that is quite separate from the sensitivity of red and green. So, and here in the middle, there are the colors that are mixed between red, green, and, and, and blue. So clear here, there is something that has components for everybody, for everything. Blue, red, and uh, red, and uh, green. And you see that blue and red are actually from separate wavelengths, are quite distant from the wavelength, and we have different sensitivity to these hmm, colors. So keeping in the same page on the same artifacts, things that are blue, poor blue, pure blue, and things that are pure red require the extra effort to us to see because they are on different wavelength, different perception, different kind of cones. Hmm. So we uh, do more work our brain, our eyes, so we can have high strains after a while. So that's why we should avoid blue and red separate. While instead red and green, it could be better because they are closer in our perception. So we, we don't have a lot of work to do to see this thing. We can clearly see blue and red things, but if we have a lot of that, we, those, we can start to be more tired, visually tired for that. Because our, again, our eyes need to be, and brain needs to do a lot of work because they are actually very, very separate as a wavelength and as well as sensitivity that we perceive among them. And you see that the overlaps with very little sensitivity here, the blue and the, and the red one. Okay, so that's why we should um, avoid pure color, especially stream color for this, this reason. This reason, and also that's why we should focus on not using too much colors for the same reason. Because if we if you use too much color, we are going to, to spread all over the wavelengths and to again use all cones that we have to process this very different kind of information. Hmm? And here there is an example about designing first in grayscale. So if you pick a let's say good website or good application and transform it in grayscale, you still are able to recognize the main elements. So this is a button that is a different color than these two things. And then these two things are yellow, but they could be any other color, actually. Hmm? We don't know here, but still we see that there is a different this hierarchy. These things here is different from these other two. We know that. We don't see the colors, but we know that they are different for whatever reason. Hmm? And this is the reason should be visible here in this grayscale version. They don't need colors to understand that there is a difference between these two lines and this line here, independently of the used color. So if you're designing grayscale, everything is visible in grayscale, then you can add color. And this is darker than this, so it means that this color should be darker than this. Indeed, this is blue, sort of blue, and this yellow as a background. So designing in black and white allow you also to understand if you are not showing something that you should. Hmm? So here, for instance, uh, these one, two, three, four, five lines, colored lines, you totally lose them in black and white. Hmm? So you can say, okay, teaching is orange and research is red. But these are not different enough, and here it becomes more or less the same color. Mm -hmm. So if you design these uh, in black and white first, in grayscale, you notice that these colors are not different enough to convey information. Maybe they are nice, but they don't convey the information that you want to convey because they are too similar, and you lose them, mm -hmm. or too, too small and still you lose them. Hmm? Instead, more or less, everything else is, is working. Hmm? And again, you don't know if this is uh, 
this part here is colored or not, uh, or these dates, but they are, uh, and they convey the information that you want to convey already in, black, in the grayscale version, differently from these uh, lines of colored lines here. So it's always better, again, for this reason to design in, in a grayscale because you understand the importance of the relative elements and then you can decide to put colors to that. And how do you pick colors? Well, one way to pick colors if you don't have an existing palette is to use the color well that is also called the hue circle. And the suggestion is pick one color and then the opposite color typically works well with that. So you see the red and blue are not the opposite, clearly. So if you pick red as a primary color, this is just one example of the U, U circle. Uh, if you pick red as a primary color, you can pick a complementary color that is green, variation of greens. And if you pick orange, you can use Blue primary, you can pick some variety of, of orange towards the, the yellow more than towards the, the red for that reason. And the complementary yellow is purple. So some variation of yellow, some variation of purple. So these are opponent's colors that go well together. And then there is all the color theory behind that if you want. If you're curious, you can read, for instance, on this website. You also use um, adjacent color when you want uh, to say, okay, this is something red and this is strictly connected with this element so it's a slightly less colored red, less, less pure red. Mm? Not to complementary things, but to say similarity, again, consistency between things. Instead, if you have palettes, you can use palettes. Mm? So these are the palettes of Polytechnico, for instance. Mm? So everything in Polytechnico recently should follow these three palettes, three color. And they identify one main color and two secondary, let's say, color. And this is the palette. These are the three main colors that all website material from this university should use. Hmm? As per two years ago, three years ago, more or less. And then they also define some other colors if you need them, but first of all, use these three. And then if you have to specify some details, you don't want to use always the same blue, you can use another variation of blue. And same things for orange, you can use this, etc. with some criteria, but the main colors, the hierarchy colors, just these three first, and then if you need to add accents, to need to add other colors, you can use other palettes. And you can generate palettes. For instance, this is a website that is called coolers.com um, that generate palettes for you. You can select some elements and generate palettes. And these are colors that, five colors that go, stay well together. So you can use uh, uh, blue, green, black, and white, and orange. So if you want to use to find a palette, this generates palette automatically uh, with some criteria if you want. And also give you the color code in uh, hexadecimal. And you can also say, okay, I would keep one and generate the others, etc. Hmm? So if you want to use colors in your application website, you can generate a palette. If you don't, want, don't know how to decide, you can generate a palette and use that palette for everything in your application. And again, these are five colors, not 11, just five. And some of them will be primary and others will be not primary to be used for secondary things and secondary operation. And there is also a website like these color rovers that brings, show you already existing palettes by designers, uh, graphical designers, etc. that selected some palettes and decide to put it online, so these are two examples of palettes, for instance, reported here. So there are resources. If you have palettes in your company, the university, et cetera, you should use those to co be coherent with the other products that the university, the company has. If you can pick one, you can either generate or build on the shoulder of those that 
know more about colors and generating palette. And here there is again yet another palette. This is the Chrome palette, the Google Chrome palette that's identified which is with a, with a white background which are the colors of the text that may happen in Chrome with a meaning so the primary color, the secondary color, the deactivated the elements, the link, the positive, the negative, and the warning should follow these colors. And that's it, only these colors. And if you have a black background, these are the, these others. But this is the set of colors that Google Chrome uses overall. Hmm? No more than these seven color. Hmm? And you can also identify various contrasts of the colors because you clearly want to avoid uh, writing uh, black on black and having too low contrast and that nobody or almost nobody is able to read about the colors. Hmm? Maybe in different luminosity, in different light conditions, with different kind of screens because again, colors is something that we perceive is not a property of something so it depends on the luminosity of the screen on the light and environment, even for digital hmm, uh, pages and applications. Uh, so here there is an example of um, not good use of colors. Um, so which is, well, which, is the, which are the problem here about colors? in addition to what is written clearly, and, or explaining to what is written. So you know what is this, right? You remember it. So in the first lot, so first of all, we have um, a legend here. And if you start putting a legend, it's already a sign that there is something that is not working very well. Because if you need to explain what you're doing, consider what you're doing first. Then maybe you still need a legend, but. Hmm. So we have um, a blue for available, gray for past, red for not available, uh, yellow for um, booking is not active yet, and the green is you are booked in this, in this lot. And then you see this vision, this view, that doesn't have all the colors in this moment, but just have two of them, right? The red one means, if you look at the legend, it's not bookable. And you also have here that you book 36, somebody books 36 out of 36 spot, so clearly not bookable. And the blue ones, are still available. And so, after this description, which are at least two things that color wide or visual design wise are not particular, can be improved, let's say can be improved. There are at least two things. Yes, excluding the legend. Just here in this part. The white, the text of the blue, the light blue. Yeah, this could be checked about for, for contrast. Um, maybe. And then, other two things. Mm, according to, uh, who knows, who knows? Yes, that is one thing. Uh, because they are closed, probably. Yes, they are closed. This is um, a study room, so it's closed between 1 and 2 p.m. But it's not in the legend, so yeah, it's closed. And so no color. And according to legend, it should be not uh, bookable, because it's closed, so you cannot book a place in the case. So why adding a, I agree, why adding a yet another um, 
things here. Why this is right? Again, why I'm asking a question it should be easy to understand. And why these are two kind of red? So why the body here is a red that is different from the title? Cannot be the same color? It's not that you pick one hour here and you pick all the, the entire spot. So why is it a different color? Probably because they like it, but there is no re a real reason why this. And can you say just looking at the color without reading how much space is left in one room? Is there something that the color convey to you that some rooms are have more space than the other to be bookable? No, they are all blue. Even if there is one spot left, or two, or 10 spot left, are they all in the same colors? Hmm? But this is an information that the color could also convey, which is the field level. Hmm? So if I have, if I have to choose a, a study room on uh, a Friday, and maybe I have no preferences, by looking at the color, I don't see the, any difference between these two. But this has two spots, so it will be crowded as a studio room. This has 10 spots out of, out of 40, less than 40. So in this moment, this is not so, empty, not so full, so probably it will be quieter, etc. So if I can choose, probably I, maybe I will choose this one if I need us a, a more silence, more quiet, because this is less people in it. If I can choose freely between these two. And the color is not something that doesn't convey this information at all. So instead of using a shade here for no reason, that could be one reason to use a shade to indicate how a field is the room. So full color, pure color is totally filled and, or almost filled and then, and they can also use one single color to indicate the field level. So it's totally filled, uh, poor color, empty, not, not colored at all, and use a shade of the same color to indicate the field of the, this room. So there could be a lot of other um, options to, to do that. Okay, and this is about colors. So few colors, big palettes, don't exaggerate, complementary colors. So then there are other two things. Um, one is about navigation, and the other one is about uh, what people read on the web or on a mobile application when you have text. So navigation um, is clearly consists of allowing people to do the task that they want to do. So getting the work done, getting their action done, that is for work, for fun, et cetera. And you have the task navigation, that is how you move from one piece to the other. And you have the navigation within the, the application that is finding information, for instance, hmm? on a website, or on social media, or find an action that you want to do, hmm? to follow. And still has nothing to do with visual elegance and graphics. And we know that we have various options for navigation. We have navigation by selections, like, like this. So you can pick something here. You can navigate. You can select buttons, uh, etc. You can have shortcuts and gesture for rapid interaction. So maybe there is a back button, but you have a gesture to do that also. Or if you long press something, you can have additional results. So there is a navigation for, let's say, everybody, and the navigation for the expert user that already know how to use it and can use different kind of navigation. So list, menu bar, menus, pop-up menus, toolbar, shortcut and gestures are all kind of navigation that we have. And we can also guide navigation in one way to the other. So maybe if I select a yes or I select a no here, something different happens, a new question appears, a new page 
uh, is enabled, or if it is a survey, the survey ends, because maybe it's one criteria to having the, the survey. Mm? And same things, navigation through the menu, like find, in which we can find freely in an application something. And we know menus. Mm? We know menus, like on the web, they are almost always on the top of the page. Mm? And when we collapse them, they appear as a hamburger menu, either on the left or on the right of the same more or less space that we're occupying before. And menus, when we have, they need to be organized. And they can be organized in different way. It could be uh, a, a linear sequence, one step after the other. It's also navigation could be to, to gu can guide these in a linear sequence, like in a wizard. One step after another step, and then there's another step. And navigation is just step one, two, three. Or it could be a hierarchical structure, like a tree, or a, a more complex uh, structure. So here there is an example of a tree-like content organization in which, in this website, you have one, two, three, at least level, maybe four, level of navigation. First of all, you choose what you want to do. So shop ray, outlet, travel, learn, etc., And then these open a second level menu, let's say camp, climb, cycle, fitness, etc., and then it's open another level with all the details when you choose one. So this is a complex navigation. Structure is a tree because you select the first, then you have a second level, then you have a third level, and then you finally find something. Um, is this good? Do you see anything bad in this menu or anything that can be improved in this menu? content-wise, organization-wise, in these three, let's say, three levels of menu, or just within the shop array, so in the, in the first two uh, levels, in this second or third level. No, everything good? So you're saying, uh, just to understand, if you, it's not clear if I can click bikes here or I should click on mountain bikes, road bikes, hybrid bikes. Yes, that could be one. Maybe, maybe I cannot click on bikes and this menu is not telling me anything, or maybe I can. Hmm? So clearly this is the, the header for everything because all of these are kind of bikes. Hmm? And so these are actually bikes, these are helmets, and you can have three kinds of helmets, uh, and etc. Uh, but look at this, at the second menu. So they are apparently organized by activity, right? Because there is camp and hike, that's an activity, sport activity, that is climb, yet another activity, cycling, fitness, run, Pedal, snow is not really an activity, but let's say that it's a sport on the snow in the mountain. Travel, it's sort of activity. Men is an activity, man. I don't think so. Women, same. Kids, not an activity. Okay, so yes, we completed activity here and we said another category. Um, that is men, women, kids, fine. And then footwear, that is not men, women, and kids, or other genders, or age of the life, elderly, etc. footwear. Why are I here footwear? And then there is the single elements that tell you that your menu maybe started well, but is not going well now, that is more. What is more? More is everything else. So I, I, it's too complex to organize the menu here, and instead of deciding what to put in the menu, what not, I just add more, that is everything else. So if you are navigating this website, and you want to find some 
um, helmets for bikes. You probably go to cycling and then because it's for bike, uh, or you go to men, which is the preferred way according to the designer of the website. We will end up probably finding the same content in both ways. Mm? Because if I'm looking for my helmet, probably I will find it both in both places. But which is the preferred way for you? Mm? You designer, you creator of this website or this menu, which is, which is the way that you want to prefer people go? To bikes or to men? Mm? Here is not decided because, or in more, we don't know what it is. And if I'm looking for some shoes, I'm going to see you know, some running shoes, or I'm going to see men, or I'm going to click on footwear. Because actually shoes can be in all these three places. We see here shoes for cycling. Hmm? So, and this travel category and the travel with Ray are different or the same? So from this traveler with Ray, you can buy things for traveling or not. So again, every time that you find yourself asking questions, probably is something that there is something that is not working smoothly. So how can they, uh, they could have, so imagine that we don't have more here. Uh, how can they have kept quickly and with a minimal change activities separate from men, women, kids? with a small change, what they, can, they could have done to keep the activities separate more than these uh, from men, men, women, and kids. Without redesigning everything, just one small change. Oh uh, yeah, maybe they could have used different colors. Another option? <coughs> yes. They could have did something like this. In another color probably. So just separating. Okay, the first one are activities. That's a group. That's an activity. And then I see something here that tell me this is starting another group. It doesn't tell which is, what is in this group, but it's different. Just one small change like this help to split things in this organization. Then this is a tree-like organization, and they surely have a lot of things to, uh, to add. But here, they probably started maybe with activities, and then they decided to add men, women, kids, and they decided to add other things, and in progress, and this could happen in a, in a product, clearly. So this is an example of a tree-like content organization with some uh, issues. Um, if you want to build a menu like this, you can uh, use something like task analysis, for instance, to organize menu. So semantically describe which is the task that people would like to do, and so deciding which are the elements that you want to put in a menu. Uh, in any case, a limited number of levels, not too much levels, two, three are already uh, a lot. A lot. Uh, create lo groups for logically similar elements, activities, etc. cetera. Um, when you have groups, try to cover all the possibility that you care about. Mm -hmm. So age ranges, zero to nine, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and more than 30, if you are interested if you are especially interested in these areas in particular, because you, you have fine grade here, but cover everything if you have something like this. Um, make sure you are not using overlapping concept. Hmm? For instance, concert and sports, they're fine because concert is only for music and sports is only for sport, uh, instead of entertainment and event, because an event could be also part of entertainment because you can go to, to see something for entertaining, hmm? and you can also have events that are not for entertainment. Hmm? So try to use specific word when you describe things instead of the general category, if there is, especially if there is overlaps. 
Um, try to arrange items in a natural sequence if you can, not alphabetically, and again, group related items. All of these are alphabetically. Camp, climb, cycle, fitness, um, but not the rest. Um, but in some cases, you don't have a natural sequence, so you have to rely to some other way of um, ordering and uh, keep the ordering of item fixed clearly. Don't change page to page or, um, or not duplicate them around. So here there is yet another example of navigation. So we are in the same tool as before, right? So you want to book a study room. So here we have three options. Uh, we can click on study room, we can click on library, and we can click on the secretor area. Um, let's ignore this arrow that gives the idea that is something that you can expand because it's not, but it's, it's a link, it's a button. So you click on study room and what happens is this. Why this is, again, a uh, bad choice for what we have said up to now about colors, layout, etc. You have all the information that you need to make a decision, to book a study room. But from a visual perspective, it can be improved, let's say in this way. Which, where is the problem here, visually? Yes, yeah, well, that could be one. So instead of opening a submenu that there isn't, uh, you open uh, another, you create another table uh, on, on the bottom, but okay, this is not a submenu, they want to create another table, let's work with that. That could be better, but which is one thing that is missing in this setup with a separate table? You don't know which is the selected, exactly. You know that you are in a study room because it's written here, and then it's the same name that is written here, but you don't know which is selected. So this could be bold, this could be a different color, these other two could be disabled. Many things could happen, but there is no visual indication of what you selected. Hmm? So which is the previous step. What happens if I click library? Can I click library or not? with this menu opened, and which, what they are selected. And then here you see a list of the study room, and when you select one, this is what appears. So again, we have the same problems before. Which study room we are booking here? Well, we are booking the study room, the second floor, uh, in Corso Castel Filardo, and so we probably have clicked here. So why cannot, again, I like this, maybe disable this. What happens if I click here? This is changing, and I just need to read a lot. I just need to read this, I need to read this, I need to read this, and then I need to, to read this, with also information that are really useless, are they? The, the code of the room. It tells something probably to architects and to planners of Polytechnico, but probably to nobody else. So that this is the local code where, I mean, where is the local code? It's not written on, 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 a, on the wall, the local code of, the, of that corridor, because this actually is a corridor, it's not even a room. So oh, there is also information that are useless so for a student or for a teacher. Also for me, that information is totally useless. Um, put a map, put, put something, but not the, put nothing, and that is also the, a, good, a good choice. And et cetera. Hmm? So he, and then here we have the same problem as, as before. Um, this is all past, so it's all grayed out. Uh, even with, and also it's past, and do I really care that 
On the 17th of September 2020, the study room has 32 people in it. Now I care about it, or it's one piece of information that they could have avoided to provide to me. If I'm not booked in this in that slot, which I'm not. So, so all of this is not um, then also working week. We can discuss what means working week in different parts of the world, for instance. Because Monday, Friday, yes, but maybe not everywhere. And also, why one day, three days? You didn't like two days or four days? Or um, et cetera. Hmm? So visually organized from an organization standpoint, this has various things to, to avoid. It's not impossible to use. Hmm? A lot of people, maybe also some of you, use this with success at a certain point. But, but still, it has missing a lot of small, small details. It's not incredibly big details that would have helped doing this more smoothly and asking less questions hmm, from users that are not exactly you. Hmm? Maybe other people with different background could have more or less difficulties in using this. Hmm? So all of this is easily preventable applying Criteria, guidelines, principle, thinking about what you are going to put, designing a system, designing user interface, not just jotting down things on a piece of paper or in code. And also evaluating this. So once this is up, why not picking five students and say, can you please use this? And probably students will say, okay, but why this is not alighted? And it was probably three seconds in code to, to solve this. It's not something huge. It's not a really complex algorithm to, to highlight these and disable the other two voices, right? So it's not a huge effort to fix this, but it will benefit maybe more people than not the current version. And, and we are going to, to speak about evaluation in a few weeks um, because you are going to also do evaluation. Um, okay, here there is another example of a menu with grouping um, that's separate between the actual, this is actually a positive example, um, separate between the used, um, the groups that represent the used the, uh, fonts in the documents, the most used uh, font in general by you and all the others. Mm -hmm. So you can have a shortcut and you can find information before. Um, also, the preview is really, really important because you can recognize the font. You don't have to remember how it was called, that font that it looks like uh, a type of writer, because you look at the fonts and you find one that looks like a type of writer and you can use it. Even if it's not the same as you used last time, but it's nice for that moment, it's suitable for that moment, and you can, can use it. And it's scrollable because this can be uh, very, very long, and here clearly there is alphabetical order in all of these. Hmm? So there is not a semantic ordering. Maybe you can have a semantic ordering here in the frequently used font. Maybe you can start with the most frequently used and put in the end of the least frequent used, but then, and also here for the current use in the document, uh, but then here in the old fonts you probably uh, cannot if you want to split these in three, in three blocks. And so it's not a bad idea to have actually the same coherence between ordering in the three blocks. It's a matter of pros and cons. Hmm? Hmm. Clearly, a semantic order could be better in some cases, and in other cases, maybe you want to, to, to have a consistency, and so you have to decide. Hmm? But it's all about making decision on what you want to communicate. Um, And then we, we have a series of, of, of things in the, in, the, in the web page or in graphical user application that give us hints on how to use things, like the icons 
or the breadcrumbs or the color coding. There are all things that give us hints on how to use things. It's not that the save icon, the icon plus the text give us like save with the icon and the text, give us much more information than the text alone. Is that it's easier to see the icon quickly and say, okay, this is the icon I've already seen, so you know that it's saving, and so at a certain point you can remove the text at all and still use that because we remember this small detail, this scent of information. And we have poor information, we typically have people that don't know where to go, we are not sure of our action, so we click something and say, okay, is this happening? I'm going, I'm in a new page or not? Um, or I need to click back, back, back because I'm not, I don't know where I am. And here there is yet another example from our university. So here they're using colors, right? Uh, you remember that before we say that uh, teaching is orange and research was red. Uh, here there is things that are red. That is not the research because there are the course catalog and the student guide. That is not the research. And we have stuff that is orange but it's just here. So they are using a different color coding than the previous page. That is already per se uh, a problem. But let's ignore that. And they use the color appropriately because these are actually connected, so the same colors. And these four are actually connected because this is services for students, uh, boards, fees, scholarship for students, and information to study abroad. So there are information services that Polytechnic is offering to students that are the same colors, etc. So let's imagine that you uh, remember this and then you click. And then if you click in these boxes, good luck. Uh, so all pages have a different color scheme. These are uh, stronger color than these. Why? Because, yes. Uh, different layouts. So these are a menu here. This doesn't have a menu. And these lose the boxes at all, uh, etc. Hmm? So this is something that it was made not on purpose, clearly. But uh, it was made over time, so one page were updating, the other page weren't. And so it may happen at a certain moment in time that things are not coherent, but still you start wondering if you are in the same website as before because the layout is totally different. And the first time you don't know how to navigate the here. So the menu here, th there is the menu here, but it's hidden by default, while here it's visible by default. Um, so, and here, probably also. Uh, so you, you start seeing different color, different way. You don't even understand maybe at a certain point if you are still in didactica.polito.it or you are out in another Polytechnic website. Hmm? Because things look so different from one page to the other that you lose orientation. Hmm? Maybe not now, maybe not after 11 times clicking on those link, but maybe at the first time, Yes, if you're looking for some information to decide to enroll or not enrolled, you can have some disorientation. And so this is a disservice that you're doing to your users, especially the novice one, not the one that are here since years and years and years. And this is, again, not done on purpose. This is an example of a complex system, big system, that evolved over the year and Without a design system, without the guidelines, specific guidelines, we have patterns about colors, but they are not using it, clearly. Uh, you end up doing this, and you end up after years and years and years to create a disservice to the new users that you have. Hmm? And so if you are a university, you can probably say it's fine, uh, but if you are not, and you meet your company, you are creating reasons not to have people using your services, buy your products, etc. Hmm? So this is really fundamental for, for this, keeping a coherent aspect. Now, so here there is another example, which is the difference between this icon here and this icon here. They are the same icon, just put in two different lines. Hmm? So visually you don't know which is the difference, or the key and the key with the people. 
what this means. A key and a key with a people. It's not really helpful. It's not icons that tell me something, that communicate something in particular. And it's these settings, and this is what it is. Because also this could be settings. And so this one is tools. And what does it mean tools? And why you have tools here? So again, small things that, so if they change the icons, probably it's everything okay, it's everything done. It's just one change of the icon. But the, you have to think about it and decide what to do and what you want to communicate to your users. Hmm? So these are the four common problems that you can typically have. Unexpected categories, short links, hidden navigation, you don't know. I, I'm lost in the menu. I'm, I don't know how to navigate. I need to click back, back, back on the browser because I don't have a way to go back or to move away from this window. And icons are too generic or not easily uh, recognizable. Um, this is actually another good example of uh, icons hmm? because icons sometimes they have the word so they are used uh, with the text and so the good toolkit, the tooltip, they have a context. These are for clipboard, these are for slides, these are for fonts. So they are separated in area that are not organized alphabetically, but according to, to the topic. This is about all text, paragraph, and you can have all things here. Some of things are redundant hmm, on purpose, so you can use some information here and also in other part of the, of the user interface. And if you recognize that the new slide is made with this icon, at a certain point you stop reading and you just click here because you know, you learn that uh, this icon is for creating a new slide. And this supports people that use PowerPoint since 10 years, that just click on the icon, and people that are using that for the first time because they can read that is a new slide that they can learn that is the icon associated with that. And so until you don't change this, and Microsoft did not for a number of years, you retain the knowledge and you retain familiarity. And so people will upgrade to the new version of PowerPoint and still are able to use from day, z from day zero. That is very, very important, especially if you buy something, not to disorient users. Um, links, when you have to create links, you always use, try to use multi-word line links. Download the next alignment assignment templates, is good, <coughs> click here, is bad. It doesn't say what happens. And so they are actually the same things. Download the assignment, assignment template, click here. But this is much clearer and easier because you can click everywhere in these three words and bring you to the same uh, document instead of a single word. And try to use straight language like spreadsheet for computing score instead of scoromatic or something that can be clear for you but not for a lot of other people. And similar things about groups uh, for forms, for instance, you can have, so here there is naming groups and this is about emails separated and organized in the page clearly with titles, with uh, columns, with uh, warnings, with a specific button to say, I have done. Hmm? And finally, just one thing, one last question, then if you want, you can have a look at these last five slides. It's not, um, most of the things are not so, so, so strange, but it's tried to demonstrate, the rest of the slides are trying to demonstrate this question, how people read online. Without looking, which is the answer? Online or a mobile application. They don't. Hmm? So we typically, this is how it works, but what people does is actually skim about things, glance about things, look for some keyword specific for them, and then focus on them. So skim on the page to say, okay, I'm looking at this area, I'm looking for travel. Okay, when I find travel, I stop reading if it's 
the kind of information I need if it's not continue to quickly move. Mm -hmm. So this is an actual study of research so where people just look at the beginning of the page. The information here is not even looked at. And then people look at here. Why they look here? And to, to move to the next page. Never done, but yeah, you, you can. Uh, you can. Um, so when you want to design something, you, what, what, this tells you, if you want to put somewhere on information that should be visible by everybody, where do you put it? Top left. Hmm? Always above the fold. The fold in a web page, the fold is what is visible in the first screen of the page without scrolling. Hmm? So in the first part of the page, you have a high chance that the information is visible and seen. Maybe not to read a lot, but seen. Instead, if it's down, you have a very, very low probability. So here, there's another example. Nobody read Rebook. Nobody read Rebook. Hmm? But everybody look at the pictures, because pictures are more evident than not text. And again, someone read Pain is Temporary, the book is forever, but clearly not all, because they didn't arrive to the end. And what we do is actually scanning it through pages. Hmm? So you design all of these, but what people do is just I following their task. I want to buy a ticket, so I'm looking for buy tickets, purchase, this information. And then when I found them, I will read this part and ignoring everything else. So text is important, text hierarchy is important, color is important, we have already spoken about text, but keep this in mind. We need to put the information that we need to communicate, but not, don't waste time writing 11 pages of text because nobody's going to read that. So try to keep text shorter. Here there is an example uh, of text, so you, can, you can easily look. So this is a description of Nebraska with some monuments. And the, with a concise text, scannable layout, and the language is objective, all three together, they get more than 124% of improvement with respect of understanding or remembering with respect to the base condition that is a normal text Wikipedia style. Mm? And they split in um, a bullet list, so more structured, more easy to scan, because clearly this is more easy to scan. If I'm looking for monuments, I can scan the name of the monuments. Here it's more difficult because there are parentheses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm? So best con location to put content above the fold where people expect and user will scroll down in your page in your application only if the first content is interesting. Otherwise, they will leave your, your application. OK, and we have done. You can have a look at this, but it's not. It more or less is what I, I just told you now. Uh, we will have. Um, I was saying that tomorrow you will have Alberto having a lecture about uh, design patterns that is still related to this, and then we will move on more on the evaluation size, that is the heuristic evaluation you will have to, to conduct, and also the usability evaluation uh, as, I said, the reminder of the course. Have a nice afternoon, and we will, see, we will meet on Friday.